Mr. Ghana, thank you very much for joining us on SMWX. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Sizwe. Uh, greetings to you. Uh, greetings to the SMWX uh, uh, viewers. Uh, and I'm very honored on this day to be sitting here with you. Uh, it's, it's a privilege. It's a thanks privilege so that I don't take uh, lightly. Thanks so much. In fact, this is your second time, so you're becoming yes. a, a regular. Maybe we should just make you a contributor on SMWX and then we're done. Yes, but you know, it means that I'll have to contribute once every three years uh, <laughs> because the last time I was here was uh, in 2019. Uh, but it's, uh, it's always for me uh, an honor, a privilege, as I say, uh, to interact with yourself. Um, and, you know, we've been interacting uh, not only on, on the show, mm. Uh, but for many years, yeah. you know, uh, so, yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Thanks so much. Thanks mm. so much. So let's dive right into it. Um, why did you leave the DA? It's, it's been over a month now uh, since I left the DA. Um, and there, there were a number of factors, at least on my, on my side, uh, looking at the state of South Africa, uh, the state of politics, the state of politician in South Africa, mm. but equally uh, increasingly, increasingly getting a sense uh, that uh, the DA was, was losing its appetite uh, to grow, you know, and, and to fill the vacuum uh, that uh, uh, the ANC uh, has created, you know, as it focuses on itself. You know, I, I always say when, when, when you have the big party, uh, like the ANC, talking of uh, a renewal. You can only renew that you have. They're, they're not even talking of how we involve uh, more than 14 million South Africans that uh, in 2021 uh, uh, did not uh, participate in the, in, the in the elections for local government. Uh, and the DA was starting to talk of consolidation. So on one side, Others are renewing what they have. Uh, the DA consolidates what it has. Uh, and that consolidation does not talk to the 14 million. Uh, that renewal does not talk to the 14 million. So, and you look at where South Africa is going. Uh, I mean, like you can talk to many South Africans. Um, people will agree that South Africa is going the, in the wrong direction. Uh, it's uh, uh, declining quickly. Uh, that the freedoms that are in the constitution uh, seems to be the preserves of those that have money. Uh, for the majority of South Africans, they are left to fend for themselves. And that's why I, 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 I decided to leave so that one can embark on this journey to reorientate uh, and introduce a different kind of politics, a different kind of a politician. And one must do it in the open. Uh, because if, if you try to do it, then you are you are kind of moonlighting and you are in the DA, you are a member of the legislature, then it's just a matter of days before you get a front page in a, in a, in a newspaper that says, Ghana is thinking of forming something. So I'd rather do it in the open. Everyone knows what my intentions are. And that's why, uh, that's why I'm here. That's why a month later, yeah. Still, still alive, still kicking. Um, and, I, and I do want to get to that mm. alternative. Mm. But... Just to further try and unpack the, the DA question, because mm. ultimately at the moment, that's the second biggest party in South Africa. So people yes. are dissatisfied with the status quo that mm. they see government at the moment, but then the immediate successor right now as we stand would be the DA. Um, mm. A lot of black leaders have left the DA. There mm. was this big thing after you left where Helen Zilla published a list of black leaders in yeah. the DA. To what extent uh, was race <coughs> the DA's inability to um, become a home for black leaders um, crucial to your decision, or was it actually not even part of the decision at all? It it, it was it was not uh, like a part of the decision. As I said, for me, it's when one joined the DA in two thousand and two, mm. uh, and so I was a member and activist uh, for twenty years. We were clear that we, we, the DA was was bullish, you know, it was like to say, no, we, we want to grow, we want to grow in more communities. Uh, but something happened uh, in uh, 2019, 
2019, where now the focus was like, no, let's consolidate the support that we have. Mm -hmm. You know, you now when you start consolidating, and I, so being a, a political player myself, and I can see that you no, know, there's a vacuum in there's a vacuum in uh, that is not being filled, and now you have the DA that trying to consolidate. Then you're like, no, but. <sighs> If we continue at this rate, uh, then there's no way that we can be able to save the country. Mm. So all, all you are doing is uh, trying to slow the decline, not arrest the decline. Mm. You're trying to slow, but eventually know that it's, it's going to rock bottom, but like prolong it. And, and now me, I'm, I'm, I've got kids. Mm. I've got kids. My youngest is six, is six years. I'm like, if, if we continue at this rate, uh, when it gets to uh, 18, 20 years, where will South Africa be? Mm. Uh, and one had to then roll up his sleeves to say, you know what, I can't afford, as Magash Lega, I can't afford to leave behind a West South Africa for, for my kids and their generation and than the one that I enjoyed, mm. uh, uh, you know, in, in the early stages of uh, democratic South Africa. You know, I can't, I just... And I just felt that the day was no longer that that wanting to you know uh, much more uh, reach out to more communities, reach out to more sectors uh, in society, and that was for me the bigger uh, the bigger reason for yeah. for saying, you know what, these politics I know they are leaving people behind. We we need to introduce a different kind of politics. We also need different voices. We need new voices in politics, we need new faces, we need new thinking. And uh, I just, when, when there's renewal and consolidation, it does not speak to that uh, passion of mine. And, 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 and for me, you know, since I say, it's not about a position for me. It's not, it's not about, if, if all I wanted was a position, I would, I would have stayed as an, as an MPL. I, I was a caucus chairperson in Gauteng. But it's about the country. It's about the people of this country. It's about the, the millions that are barely surviving. You know, in 2022, let's, let's think what will happen. If people are barely surviving in 2022, what will happen three years from now? If we do nothing, what will happen? I was thinking to myself the other day, like, pretty soon the quality of drinking water yeah. can then become a problem. Pretty yes. soon roads can break down even further and then you can't even travel you know as difficult as it is mm. pretty soon stage five could become the norm rather than it's yes. like it's it's actually worrying what what could happen if we carry on on this path yeah so we we, we can't and and that's that's the thing that uh, pushes one to say you know what uh i i can't just stay in in in, in the organization, stay in, in, in the legislature when I see things uh, getting out, uh, uh, declining at the rate that they are. And if, if, if I can uh, speak to uh, fellow South Africans, uh, my age group, even those that are born before me, those that are born after me, to say, guys, let's roll up our sleeves. There's no Superman. There's no Messiah. Uh, this is our country. If, if uh, it fails, for majority of uh, us, majority of uh, our fellow South Africans, there's no way that we will go. You know, I I say this is uh, to say, <clears throat> at a certain level, uh, people of Zimbabwe, people of Malawi, people of Mozambique, uh, people of uh, Somalia, Ethiopia, they are kind of lucky. They still have a South Africa too. To run to, they still have a South Africa to immigrate to. When South Africa fails, where will the people of South Africa go? Because we know they won't go to Mozambique. Already people are leaving Mozambique, can't go to Zimbabwe. People are already leaving Mozambique. I mean, Zimbabwe. They are leaving Somalia, they are leaving Malawi. Now, where will the people of South Africa go? We are, we are the last, last country in the southern tip of, of the continent. If we don't roll up our sleeves now, then we we are facing a future where my kids and your kids will likely be poorer than we are 
their kids will even be worse. You know, you know, so, and I'll, I'll say this. So my mother was a cleaner at the government office. She sacrificed the, the little that she had so that I can get an education and I can live a better life. My kids are having a better upbringing than the one that I had. Because my mom, she was a single mother, three kids in the village. Now they don't stay in the village, they have running water in the house. Now, if things continue at this rate, their kids who are, who are, going, to, are going to have worse life than their, their grandparents, which is me. Mm. Can't afford that. I just can't. It's, it's so true, and you, you speak about the worry you have about the decline of the country. Yeah. And there are various responses that others have taken. Mm. Um, some have gone to existing political parties. Mm. Uh, Action SA, for example. Mm. You have said that you don't think the existing options um, are workable and you want to build something new. Yeah. Uh, but others will say, well, there's so many political parties um, why do you think a new political party is the right answer to this problem? For me, when, when, you look, when I look at, at the existing parties and I look at the, what, what has been happening since 2019 um, and I say, with all these existing political parties, 14 million registered voters felt that the they don't feel represented by the existing political parties. So one could go and join uh, one of them and be part of those that, that mobilizes 11, 12 million of South Africans. Or can say, no, I, this democracy of ours will work when, uh, when the people participate in it. And those that uh, feel that the, the current political parties uh, don't offer them the hope. It's not. It's not the home for them. Uh, let's join hands and build something new, something that's going to uh, introduce new voices, new faces, new thinking into the politics. Because we are where we are uh, in the main due to the failure of uh, uh, of politics and politicians. That generation of politicians. And now we, we, we can't still look at them uh, as uh, the ones that are going to fix the situation. Mm. And, and that's why I, I think this is when we need to reset our politics um, and, and introduce a different culture, a culture that, that takes communities along, that takes the people along on this journey to save and rebuild the country. And, and uh, for me, that was... Uh, uh, important to kind of break completely uh, with the with the old and try to build something uh, something new, fresh uh, that will change uh, the political dynamics in the country. So I think a lot of people are interested in the idea of a new political formation. I think the conversation is happening, mm. if not overtly, then maybe behind closed doors, people are talking about there needs to be something new, mm. but. I think one of the problems is just the the practicalities of doing that. Yeah. You know, how do you actually practically build something that could contest with this juggernaut that is the ANC or even the DA with its its mm. vast network? So talk us through for those for those people who are also interested in this. Yeah. How feasible is it to actually build something new? You know, for a new generation to actually say, you know what, we're going to have a new. Mm totally new thing, build it from the ground up. You know, what, what are the practical considerations that have to go into that? So the, the, the first part is the one that I was talking about. Uh, so we do know that the 14 million registered voters, this, these are the people that once in their lives have taken a, a decision to wake up in the morning and go to the voting station to register. Mm. A significant number of them had voted before. Uh, but they've become uh, disillusioned by with the current politics. So that that for, that is the first start. Mm. Uh, I will not even go to the unregistered voters. Just focusing on those that have right. are registered. Then 
the, the first thing that you do, and it's the first thing that I did after I left the deal on the 4th of August, mm. uh, is to start reaching out in my circle, uh, the people that I know, uh, as you say. So we, people will say, no, these politics are not working. These leaders are not doing what they're supposed to do. These leaders are selfish. Uh, these leaders are self-centered. Uh, you know, uh, they are in it for their, for their stomach and, and, and so forth. And we need a different kind of elite. And, and it starts with one-on-ones. Uh, start at that basic, you know. <clears throat> I, give, I give an example when, when I meet people, because people tend to ask me, I know it's just been a month, but people ask me, hey, Ghana, mm. do you have structures? Do you have, like, mm. I don't have structures. I don't have, there's no structure. Mm. Uh, because you, you build structures from people. Uh, this is like having an, an, a, a vacant stand that's got trees and rocks and, mm. and God knows what, and then you want to build a house there. You must gather the people to, to clean the, that, that piece of land mm. and make sure that it's, of, uh, it's in a state where you can start building. And how you get the people there, you have conversations with them, you have, uh, and then uh, they have conversations with their, with their network, with their, with their circle. So as, as people uh, have price now, now that uh, you know, we, we have warm weather now, the, the rate of price and the afternoon gatherings will start increasing mm. because now it's outdoor. You know, like, pe- uh, in winter, people don't like to meet because it means that you have to come mm. to my house. And there's load shedding anywhere, so you can't go. Yeah, you know, so you might as well pry. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because you can't, you can't use the stove yeah, to cook. Right. You know? <laughs> um, so in those conversations, that's where you start uh, recruiting and identifying those that are as frustrated as you. I always say this, politics is not for happy people. If you are happy with things, you, why, what, you wouldn't want to go to politics. Uh, maybe you'll go to other places, uh, go to the beach and God mm. knows where. But <laughs> politics is for those that says things can not continue as they are. Hmm. Because if they are, if they continue as they are, then uh, the future of your kids are in, hmm. you know, are at stake. Now you need to roll up your sleeves. You, you might think that at the moment, no, you have, uh, you have some savings, uh, your pension, you know. And I, I like reminding people uh, as I try to get them to roll up their sleeves. Hmm. I said, you know. How much do you have? Like, ah, maybe 10, 15 million. Like, you know that in Zimbabwe, 500 million in dollars was not enough to buy a toilet paper at some point. Because people were sitting quietly for too long. If you sit quiet, you think that you've got 10 million, I'm telling you, might not be enough in a, in a couple of years to buy a toilet paper. So Now you have to do something. Yeah. So, so it starts with one-on-ones, and no, then I, it I, grows from there. And, I, and I hear and you on that. Yes. Um, but hmm. at some point, the one-on-ones have to turn into this yes. massive political machine. Yeah. And I think that's the, and I, I know there's no obvious answer, but I think hmm. that's, the, that's the thing that maybe holds people back from believing in something new is, yes, we want something new, hmm. but can we actually build something that is big enough, just big enough to, you know, go from these conversations to contesting a national a national election and i think for example one of the questions for mm. in my mind um and i think these you know we should have this debate in public like you say yes. rather than people talking about it um outside of public view is how would you raise the necessary funds mm. for an alternative which would be powerful enough to really play the game at the national level and then even if you can raise those funds mm. How do you make sure that you're now not compromised by the fundraisers? Mm. So there is that creative fundraising model that mm. would need to be found, um, where you balance having enough money with not just getting the money from the same sources and being led by by those funders. Yeah. So in terms of funding, you need you mm. need to make sure that even your fundraising mm. uh, efforts are democratic mm. uh, and they are open. Mm. And you are not reliant on uh, 
uh, few sources sure. of uh, big donors. Mm. You know, mm. need to be able to even even uh, the the people who, who who are now part of this can start giving your know, fifty rands, your hundred yeah. rands. Yeah. Uh, so if if you give fifty rand, you might it might in the at that time you might think might not think that it it will make a difference. Mm. But if uh, five thousand people have given those fifty rands, then it reduces your reliance sure. on a single donor, and even the donors themselves, uh, uh, the people will start feeling that you know what I'm not alone in this, mm. uh, and this thing is growing. Even my influence, uh, or whatever I I thought I would have, might not be possible. Now you think about the greater good of why you are. You are, you are giving in than um, others might want to give so that they can go to the newspaper to say, no, you know, Ghana, I gave you money. Mm. So I didn't give me money. You gave money to, to a movement that's going to save South Africa. Mm. Didn't, uh, Ghana did not come and say, fund me to be able to buy uh, bread for my kids. Yeah. You know, I'm saying, fund me so that we save South Africa. Mm. Yes, that I will do. And I'll ask from those that have, that have money, that have, the democracy has worked for them, they've benefited from the democracy. Because we must not think that when we say the democracy is failing or the country is going down, uh, it, it, it has not worked for certain people. Mm. Uh, certain people were able to creatively make money and so forth. And it was like, no, please uh, put some of the money in, in trying to save this democracy so that the majority of South Africans that are yet to taste the, fu- the fruit of this democracy can enjoy something. You know, you know, someone, when I said this, he said, you know, there are those that they have not even sat under the shade mm. of the democratic tree. And that's why we do what we, what we are doing. And, and for me, if that 50 rand, and I learned this, you know, when I was running as a, uh, wanting to be the premier of how things mm. didn't succeed, mm. people have written about that. So, but one of the things that I did, yeah was to ask people to give the little that they have. Mm. And in the greater scheme of things, uh, it, it contributed almost uh, 80% mm. of the funds that were raised yeah. uh, during yeah. the campaign. Because it was 50 rand year, 100 rand year, uh, 200 rand year, uh, 500 there. Mm. And when you start putting them, putting all those funds together, you we can do something. I think there's there's a lesson that uh, not not only what happens. I mean, I know people tend to cite uh, Obama or Bernie Sanders mm. as an example. We can look at what's happening in Zimbabwe with the Triple C, uh, where ordinary Zimbabweans that are still in Zimbabwe that mm. uh, say, "You know what? We are trying to change our country." Uh, they are doing this uh, crowdfunding, you know, like uh, uh, and building the triple c in the in in, in that way in, mm. the, in the local communities and those those are the models that we must look at <coughs> yeah. we, we must not think that one or two donors are going to do this sure. this is our country you know <laughs> we have to do we have to give something in order to for us to save it mm. Mm. Yes. and you know many people will you know say um mm. okay the the anc is is a problem mm. but let's look at the alternative solutions um yeah i was thinking to myself you can comment or not comment <laughs> on on this depending on, on how you feel but i've i've said this in an, another video on the channel as well mm. which is that if the anc falls below 50 yeah um and we must talk about that prospect whether it will or not at the moment. But if yeah. it does, then the next person in line is John Steenhuisen to be president. He's yes. the automatic successor. Yes. Uh, now, I know you've just come out of the DA and you don't necessarily want to say bad things about DA leaders, but where do we go? We either go ANC or the next is, is John Steenhuisen from the DA. If not him, then it's going to be Malema coming from 10% to be president or 12% or, or, or Herman Mashaba, who might even have less of the vote. So actually, where do we go as, as a people 
mm. away from this this disaster. It doesn't seem that we have an obvious option. And and it's precisely that lack of option, Sizwe, uh, that made 14 million people not vote in the last election. Mm. Precisely that lack of option. And that's what we, we need to try to do, to say it's not... Uh, this the 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 fifth option which you did not mention it's us the people us the people not not what currently exists you know i i i have this dream that uh, we can be able to mobilize and magashle ghana does, uh, does not want to lead uh, this formation uh, say it in public so that no one comes in and say but Ghana, why don't you want to be a premier candidate in mm. Gauteng? I don't even want to be a premier candidate in mm. Gauteng, or anywhere else for that matter. But what I want to do is to try to find the people that will be comfortable that they will lead this country and there will be a future for my kids. Mm. In the same way that I will take my, 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 my kids to a doctor with a belief that uh, you, the doctor will do... Uh, uh, will find what's wrong and then prescribe the necessary medication. I made that point in my life that I don't need necessarily need to be the one there. Mm. I believe there are enough people in society, in South Africa, that can lead, can be part of leading this country. Mm. And this, these people, these South Africans, are currently not in parliament. Because those that are in parliament got us where we are now. Now we must look outside Parliament. And there are many, many great South Africans. But as long as people believe that big politics, no, you, you get this sense that people say, no, politics is a dirty game. No, politics is for certain people. Mm. It can't be for certain people. It's for you. It's, it's your country. It can't be the preserve of certain people that from time to time they might shout a mandla, oi, oi, whatever thing. <laughs> it's, it's for you. It's for you. Now you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're a teacher. This is your country, it's going down. Now, if, if there, there's ever a time when uh, good people in society are called upon to serve their country, this is now. Um, uh, I, I think there, there was a lot of trust in, 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 the, in, the, in the in the politicians that were part of the, that some went to the bush, others went to prisons, others were part of the 80s uh, 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 that ungoverned, making South Africa ungovernable, uh, the UDF and the likes, that when they ascend to, 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 uh, to power, uh, they'll have the interest of everyone. Mm. Uh, what has been shown is that they are, most of their interest was for them, as it, uh, someone once said that they did not struggle to be poor. You know what scares me on that is when we talk about the alternatives mm. and where we are now, and you actually got me to think this, is we just assume that because things are getting worse, mm. that the ANC's hold on its majority is going to disappear in 2024. And there's mm. this common belief that, okay, they're going to get 45 or lower. Yeah. But um, you are saying to me, and this was something fascinating, you know, a lot of people were laughing at President Ramaphosa mm. going to Dalmas and pretending mm. to fix a pothole with goodness knows what vehicle that was that fixes potholes. And mm. But you said, if you're laughing, you're not part of the target audience. Yes. And I just have sleepless nights about the ANC retaining its majority in 2024. And that's sending a message that no matter how bad things get, no matter what happens, we just will never overcome this, this incumbency. Let me say this. <clears throat> if things continue as they are, mm. if the current players remain as they are, if we as the people don't organize ourselves to create something new, you know, you know back in the, in the days when the ANC got less than 10 million, it was a crisis. Mm. Nah? Now there are 12 million people who vote. The ANC just needs 6.5 million people. 6.5 million, then they win. The 6.5, when Ramaphosa does the pothole thing, the one that says, you know what, that guy is doing the right thing. Mm. He knows that 6.5 million people, they are, they, they are you know, excited with that. Mm. 
So if you are not, if if it gets you angry, don't worry, you are not the target. Mm. You are not the target. So if if nothing happens, if there's no uh, new entrant that's going to upset what currently exists, then you are going to have, you might have a situation where. In, uh, let, let's say, I mean, people will always say that the uh, turnout at, at national will tends to be higher mm. than uh, uh, a local government. Let's say it's higher and then it goes to uh, 15, 16 million people who vote. Sure. Which still leaves 12, 12 million people out. The, the ANC will need the 8 million, 100,000. Mm. Mm. So, so, when people think of this, and, and I know others say it's a foregone that the ANC will, mm. below, will, be, will get below 50. And all right, you know that, but what are you doing about it? Sitting at home, tweeting, not organizing yourself mm. uh, to say, you just think that other people will make that happen. Mm. In the same way that people go to bed in the hope that tomorrow morning there will be no load shedding. They go to bed hoping. The, the, the leadership has not changed. The people are still the same. The crooks are still there. You just hope. You can, can't live on hope. We have to do something. That's why I always say, we, we know what's wrong with South Africa. We know what we need to do. There's been enough writing on what needs to be done. Now we must just do it. And the people who must do it, it's us. It's no one else. And, and this time, uh, season, unlike 1994, we have to do it the hard way without the assistance of the international community. Because every country that assisted us uh, going in, 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 in the build-up to 1994, they've got their own problems now. They say, no, what, with, with, with that, with apartheid, uh, whatever issues you have now, those are domestic issues, uh, mm. deal with them. Now, we are not going to have that international goodwill it's gone we have to do it the hard way it's, it's, and, and i said this <clears throat> someday that uh, you know i was too young during apartheid uh, i will not i'll never claim that i fought apartheid my parents fought apartheid they they uh, my grandparents uh, bore the brand of apartheid and so forth uh, but now, what's currently happening, it's our struggle. In 10 years' time, the real struggle credentials will not be for, for people who, who went to exile and uh, who banned uh, the yellow mellows or whatever. It will be the people who have saved South Africa from what, what looks like a certain demise. And if sitting here, it looks like a certain demise. But it can only become an uncertain when we as a people roll up our sleeves and say, you know what, let's save our country. If, if you don't want to do it for yourself, do it for the next generation. Don't be selfish. We can't be selfish when we, we, we have somehow benefited. Me and you, since we have tasted the fruit of this democracy. We can't be that generation that because we have tasted that fruit, now we kick the ladder. So that the millions and millions of South Africans that are yet to taste that fruit never taste it. No, can 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 be that selfish. I'm 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 grateful. I'm blessed to be sitting here. I'm grateful to have enjoyed. It might not be a lot of fruits of the democracy, but the little that I've tasted. Many South Africans are yet to taste that fruit, and it's. It's something that I have to do so that they, they also taste it. I mean, you go to the village and find a 32-year-old, 34-year-old. I've never had the opportunity to wake up in the morning, catch a, a bus where it takes to go to work. And then we say this democracy has worked for them. No, can't be that. We can't be the generation that's selfish. And, and, and I say this to, to those that were born after 1975. At least, I'm targeting them. Because, you know, when we start going back, they are our parents. Our parents can't do this thing for us. It's now in our hands. Can't be that selfish, guys.
and be. Makashulekana, thank you for joining us on SMWX. Thanks for having me. It's always an honor, privilege. You know, it uh, feels like uh, somehow a therapy kind of a thing <laughs> where one has to let Indeed, it this out, is... but you know, this, this situation can't continue. Yeah. We can't, can't sit back and hope and wish something will happen. We have to do something. Let's do something. That's my call. And I'll reach out to people. Say, hey, it's your account to do something. Can't look at your parents. Can't look at the grannies that are there in parliament. And you think, those are our grandparents, man. Can't do this thing for us. We must do it ourselves. Yeah. They, must, they must retire, go and play with their grand, grand uh, kids there. <laughs> and read them stories and tell them how it was like in exile and, and in prisons. Mm. Can't say that. Look at them too. Yeah. Save and rebuild our country. It's in our hands now. It's in our hands, and we are the ones that we've been waiting for. Like, share, subscribe. Do you agree with Makashule Ghana's perspective? Uh, comment down below with your thoughts on the need for a new alternative or not. And we are very glad that you have joined us again for another episode of SMWX. Aye, thank you, Ghana. Thank you.